Okay, we've been through several videos trying to understand homogeneous coordinates, but I'm hoping that you understand why we're you now using a 3D, a matrix 3D, uh, uh, to do our to make our ship move. All right, let me bring that back up again. Build this, run this. Here's the ship. I can turn it, hit the up arrow, and hopefully it's making sense that the reason why we want a three-dimensional matrix is so that we can do the translation. Uh, let me refer you back to this code we've seen several times. Here is the matrix times the individual vertices one by one. We multiply the matrix times the vertices. And before we had to do this ship position plus the operation times the vertices. And so the operation was simply responsible for doing the rotation alone. But now that we have this matrix 3D instead of matrix 2D, we can wrap the translation portion uh, in the matrix operator as well. And now we can just say matrix times vertice and we get the same result that we saw before. So here's a good little quiz time for you. Uh, here's our matrix 3D. Here's all the floats in our matrix. And uh, let me actually uh, mark out the matrix portion here. And here's the matrix. Here's the basis vectors. I'll circle in red. So this is basis vector 1 basis vector 2, basis vector 3, and so as a simple uh, exercise, mental exercise, or do this on paper or in your own code, depending on how much you want to learn from this exercise, what do all the individual values in the matrix do now that we understand that they make up basis vectors? For example, if I change this value, how would that change what occurs on screen? And if I change this value, how would that occur on screen? And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and all these values, uh, how do I determine uh, what they do on screen? You sh hopefully that will be a good review for you. And then um, the second question is, which values are we not using? Okay, and, and in our example over here, when where we do the matrix multiplication times the vertice and we get the rotation and the, and the translation wrapped up into one matrix. Which values inside the matrix over here are we not using? So pause the video and go through that mental exercise. Alright, hopefully you paused the video and went through that. I'm going to go through it now. Hopefully this looks familiar. We've seen this in previous videos. Let me bring this down. You can see I was toying with this offline myself but but here's our shape here's our three-dimensional view but we can certainly um let me get here in the front uh we can certainly go back to our two-dimensional view but i'm going to go back to three-dimensional um all right and then again here let me just highlight it here in the tool here's the matrix okay but the individual basis vectors are this one this is our x basis vector if it helps you feel better to think of it as x. This is the y basis vector. This is the z basis vector. And if you remember, we use this value here to do the translate on the x. Okay, there's our x translate. And we use this value here to do our translate on the y. Here's our translate on the y. Okay, let me bring this down to 0 and 0 again. And then these values we can use to scale on the x, scale on the y, hopefully nothing new there you understand why that occurs and then here we can this is called skewing is what you're seeing here we don't really use skewing in video games that much but we do use these other components of the basis vectors to do the rotation which we saw so I can bring that to point seven and bring this to point seven bring this down to point seven let me zero this one out uh, actually this needs to go negative point seven remember remember negative point seven and point 0.7, you can see that we've rotated our shape down here. So we use these, we can do a scale and a scale, but if I combine these scales with these other ones, then we do a rotation. But we never really ended up using uh, these values right here. Okay, We just always have left them at 0. And yeah, I mean, we, we use this value, but we always left it at a 1. Okay, so really the values we're concerned about as far as changing our shape for our game are, are these two first rows if you would okay now just for fun let me let me uh i'm going to pause the recording and well maybe not let's just bring this let's let's start with what we had before basis vectors are orthonormal basis where they're all uh orthogonal or 
uh, perpendicular to each other in length of one. Ah, okay, so one, 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 our identity matrix again, and watch what happens. Can you think, what, what, what if I change these values, what's going to change down here in our, down here in our 3D view right there? What, well, what's going to change? Pa pause the video and think about it. Okay, I'm going to grab this slider here, and I don't know, does that make sense? Does that make sense what's going on here? Maybe we can view that in 2D, and you can see it kind of has no effect in 2D. All right, but in 3D, yeah, there's totally, a it's almost like homogeneous coordinate on steroids, but but let me uh, fly around here. Maybe it'll make sense if we get a good side view, and I'll come up here, and uh, maybe I'll come down over a little bit. Yeah, I don't know, maybe right here. Pay attention to the to the red basis vector right here. All right, let me let me grab this and you see we're changing the z coordinate of that first basis vector, so that makes sense why that shape's rocking around back and forth. Let me take it back to zero. Can you think of what's going to happen when I grab this value right here? Uh, same thing, except now it's the y. Okay, so yeah, those are kind of cool, but we don't really use those in games. We're worried more about rotate, translate. Okay, and then this we've seen what this does. So let's think about this let's think about this I'm gonna go let's go back to our sandbox game here erase all that um, I've shown you we use these values for the rotation and or scaling we use these values for the translation we always leave this value at a 1 and these values are at a 0 but if you think about it if I take a three-dimensional matrix times a 3 by 1 vector which we're doing in this other code file, all right? This is three-dimensional vector times a three-by-one vector. Well, in order to make that operation work properly, and we saw the code for that way back several videos ago, um, to get the result, let me put the result vector out here. So this matrix times this matrix, or this matrix times this vector, if you would, gives us a resulting uh, transformed vector, which is a three-by-one vector. To get that result, I have to take this row, let me see if I can go a little bit bigger with the art here. I have to take this row, that's an arrow, okay, this row, alright, this row, and multiply that row on top, but basically lay it on top of the first column, or the only column of the vector, and then I I multiply, 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 add, 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 or no, just add and add, right? Three multiplies, two adds. And then after I get that one scalar result, I stuff it right here. All right, but, but didn't I just say, let me go green. Didn't I just say this value is always a zero? Oh, that's getting messy, isn't it? This is always a zero, and this value is always a zero. It's always a zero. It's always been a zero. All right, we're not going to use them. So that's always going to be 0 times the first value, 0 times the second value, and then that last value is just a 1. Okay, so it's 1 times this value. Well, why do I want to multiply 0 times something and then add it to 0 times something? That, that's always going to give me a 0. So that's actually kind of a useless operation. That takes time out of our game. All right, We could use those that time to do some calculations on some other things, to make our game more interesting instead of wasting it away on these zeros. And then, yeah, I can do one times anything, but one times anything is whatever you multiplied that one against. Okay, so for this very last value here that I'm trying to produce, why don't I just copy whatever's here in the vector and, and paste it over there and not worry about the multiplications and the add? All right, do you see how I'm trying to shave some time off here? Now, now here's where the professional programmer in me comes out. It's like, uh, the game runs fine, Jamie. You can't even notice it. What's, well, I mean, yeah, we could go optimize this, but why would you want to? Well, I'll tell you why I want to. Purely because it's educational. <laughs> All right, I am in the same boat as a good author I recommend you reading. Um, Martin Fowler, his refactoring book. Very, I'll go away. Very simple book. Uh, straightforward, easy to learn from. Uh, but but in this book, he says something. He says, uh, uh, there's, there's a chance that this code that we're refactoring could make the program run slower. But there's a big if there. All right? And, and I'm kind of, I know some things are going to really bring the clock down. But 
And, and chances are this optimization I'm proposing we do, we won't notice a difference. All right. Um, so generally as a professional programmer, I want to find out where there are big bottlenecks in my game before I spend time optimizing them. Because I could spend hours and hours and hours optimizing the wrong code. Maybe that code get, gets executed once and it's really not that slow, but I just spent a week optimizing it. That's, that's obviously a, an extreme case, but I've seen it happen. It's a useless waste of my time and my company's money and my salary. So, so what we want to do is, is profile it. Right, and actually find where the problems are. Now you might say, Jamie, what's a profiler? <laughs> Guess what, what we're going to write next. We're going to write a profiler uh, so we can see exactly how much time we save by not doing these multiplications right here. All right, and the profiler will tell us, and it'll tell us whether we wasted our time or whether we didn't waste our time. But either way, I still think it's educational. So for purposes of this vi these video series, I'm going to do it uh, because I do think you'll learn from it. Um, but but no, by no means am I saying you should always jump the gun and premature optimize. That's what it's called, premature optimization. I'm not arguing in favor of that. In fact, I argue against that, and so does Martin Fowler in his book. So anyway, we need to write a profiler before we uh, do this optimization I'm telling you about, and uh, that's what the next set of videos are going to be for.